Thank you for tuning in to the Andrew Tate Show by GSMC Sports. I am your co-host, Sarah. I am here with Tate, and we have a great show planned for you today. In the first segment, we will be covering last night's game between the Dallas Mavericks and the Minnesota Timberwolves. Then moving on to college sports, talking about the SEC having no interest in Clemson, Clemson and Florida State, and then also Utah and conference realignment. In segment four, we'll move away from sports and into our entertainment segments, talking about a gender reveal gone wrong. And then make sure you stick around for segment five because it's Friday, which means Florida Man Friday. And we will be discussing more craziness out of Florida. As we get started, I would like to ask you, of course, to like and subscribe to the show. That really does help us out. Also, make sure you Make sure you click the right buttons because you have not set up your show the way you thought you had set it up. Make sure you click the right buttons. And uh, yeah, we do get a lot of comments and questions that come in during the show. So uh, if you'd like to go to gsmcpodcast.net, you can leave a tip or a donation that will ensure that we see your question or comment. It will put it at the top of our list. Uh, then we can engage with that question or comment. Again, the Link is gsmcpodcast.net. Tate, how are you? Good morning. Hello, Miss Sarah. It looks like you were having some technical difficulties already there, well, but uh, I set my screen up so that I, I know where everything was. But today, I I I don't know. Things were things were they weren't normal. I just didn't notice that they were not where I thought they were. So okay, it's my own fault. No, you're you're totally fine. It's Friday. It, I should be. It's not Monday. It's Friday. I know. That's what we should be at our peak performance right now. I'm a little tired myself. I think I'm just way tired, and I blame you. Mm. Those morning those uh, morning production meetings can kick your butt. Yes, I don't know why why you're trying to kill me, but yeah. I think I need hazard pay. I gotta get I gotta get in I gotta get in shape here, you know. So hey, yeah, I gotta get to your uh, to your fighting weight. <laughs> I'm a long ways from that right now. <laughs> All right. All right. Let me just uh, do one real quick thing, and we are going to talk about last night's game, which I know you have thoughts, but uh, let me go ahead and get that set up. Give me just one second. So the Dallas Mavericks concluded the Western Conference Finals with a decisive victory over the Minnesota Timberwolves, demonstrating their dominance by building a substantial lead early on. Luka Doncic, eager to compete for his first NBA championship, spearheaded the Mavericks' effort with an astonishing 20 points for the first quarter alone. This performance left the Timberwolves reeling, unable to mount a significant comeback. The Mavericks secured the series in five games, marking their first NBA Finals appearance since 2011. Dantic starred their stellar performance was supported by his co-star Kyrie Irving, who contributed significantly, particularly in the second quarter. Together, they formed an unstoppable duo that the Timberwolves struggled to contain. The Mavericks' success was also bolstered by key mid-season acquisitions like P.J. Washington and Daniel Gafford, along with the impactful play of rookie Derek Lively II. As they prepare to face the Boston Celtics in the NBA Finals, the Mavericks have shown remarkable improvement, especially on defense. Their ability to effectively double-team and disrupt the Timberwolves' offensive flow was a critical factor in their series victory. The Timberwolves star Anthony Edwards, despite his best efforts, couldn't overcome the Mavericks' defensive strategies, highlighting the gap between the two teams. Looking ahead, the Mavericks' blend, uh, blend of offensive firepower and defensive resilience positions them well for a competitive series against the Celtics. With Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving leading the charge, Dallas fans have much to look forward to in the quest for an NBA championship. Tate, this morning during our production meeting walk, I kept saying, save it for the show! Save it for the show! And so now, here's your chance. I know you have thoughts. Okay, first off, called the cops it was a murder in minnesota there was a flat-out murder in minnesota okay this was this was disappointing to me this was this was absolutely disappointing it was a biblical beatdown this game was never close luca came out punched him in the mouth and they were like okay we're not gonna fight they just it, it's like it's like a puppy that got attacked and he just rolled over on his belly and just was like i give up that's the way I felt about this game. This game was was just kind of uneventful for me, and that's no that's no slight 
for Dallas Mavericks. Dallas Mavericks came in and handled business. It's how disappointing I feel like the Timberwolves performed in this game. Very early on, I kind of felt like the Minnesota Timberwolves were like, you know what, we put everything we had in game four to make sure we wouldn't get swept. We won a game, we're not gonna get swept. Let's just mail it in. And that's kind of the way I felt. That's no that's no slight toward Carl Anthony Towns. That's no slight toward uh Anthony Edwards. Those brothers, they came to they came to ball. They came to play. It just felt like no one else. It was like a secret that the rest of them that wasn't in on that they were supposed to show up and try to win. They were on their home court. And I just felt like they just rolled over and didn't put up a fight. Early on, Luca, Luca came. Luca and Kyrie, you can tell, they came to put the Mavericks out of their misery. They came in, they were firing, Luca was firing, and there was no resistance. There was no resistance at all. It, it was absolutely disappointing. I was really hoping that this could be, especially at home, a lot of people were expecting, okay, the Minnesota Timberwolves, they're going to put up a big fight at home, try to force a game six uh, in Dallas. And that's when a lot of people thought, okay, Dallas will close them out in Dallas. No one, not very few people actually looked at this and said, hey, Minnesota's just going to roll over on their home court. And that was the thing that was really disappointing is that they didn't put up enough of a fight. You know, uh, when you're talking about the MVP and Luka Doncic, Luka deserved the MVP. Luka was lethal uh, this series. Uh, they went through and kind of early on established, you know, that th their dominance winning early games. Luca was consistent throughout. Kyrie, great series as well. Only had one off game. Kyrie, uh, if it wasn't for game game four, I think Kyrie would have had a, a say in who was going to be MVP. But Luca was absolutely uh, consistent all the way through. I don't think anyone would have questioned that Luca doesn't deserve the Western Conference MVP. Now we go on to the finals that we're looking for. And and there's some great storylines. Um you you got Kyrie who was in who was after he left Cleveland, he went to Boston. He was loved in Boston. They wanted to re-sign him. He was a, to be part of their long-term future and he decided to leave, uh, which kind of really hurt them um, and the fans. So that kind of a situation is going on there. That's going to be the big storyline uh, right there. When I look at this and I say, who's the better team? It's it's going to be... It's it's gonna it's it's gonna be uh, Brown and Tatum versus Luca and Kyrie, uh, the Mavs defense versus the Celtics offense, vice versa. This these these are two teams that are very evenly matched up, and I'm I'm you know I was thinking about this even when the series was over because I I kind of once the Celtics series was over. I kind of knew Dallas was going to win this whole thing uh, as far as the Western Conference. So it, it, right away, you start thinking about, okay, how are they going to match up? Who's going to win this? And a lot of people are going to look at it and say the Celtics. This is going to be the Celtics uh, year. I don't. I'm, I, I think these are two very evenly matched up teams. I know people look at it and say the Celtics have been an, an you know an all time great team when you're talking about win win percentages and things, uh, but 
Dallas was in that West. And the West was was a meat grinder. There, from top to bottom, the West, everybody in the West was good enough to be a champion. That's how good they were. When we're talking about the playoff contenders, all the way to the Lakers. Um, so when I started looking at this, who's gonna who's gonna win? Initially, on the surface, you initially think about the Celtics. But when I look at the way Kyrie has been playing with Luka, if Kyrie and Luka can get together and consistently put together games when they're both there, they have a major say. I don't think this won't be a quick series. This is a, this is a six or seven game series. You, I don't think you will see no chance of a sweep on this one. These are two very evenly matched up teams. So I am super excited about this. I'm gonna, I gotta do some marinating before I decide to determine who I'm gonna pick in this one. You've got some time to marinate. Yes, so, but there's a little bit of me that's leaning toward the Dallas Mavericks, um, leaning, but I haven't made that decision yet. I really wanna break down, break down the series and then talk about, figure out who I'm gonna take and then you know I'll bring it to you guys once we're there. Um, let's talk about Minnesota. Minnesota, Carl Anthony Towns, Rudy Gobert, uh, Anthony Edwards. This was a great year for them. Yes, they didn't finish the way I would like to have seen them finish out, but they made it a long way. This was their first year in the Western Conference Finals, and it felt like the moment was just a little too big. Once they got past uh, Denver, and got to the Western Conference Finals, it felt like the pressure was a lot for them. It won't. It won't be that way next year. They will. They're a young team who's only going to get better. I would not be surprised if they're right back in the situation next year and maybe moving on further. So you know, they're not done. And also, Anthony Edwards is a bona fide superstar now. He's he was on the biggest stage, performed at a very high level, and I think I'm expecting big things from him next year. But now we're on to the finals. The NBA has a, a big problem though, where the finals aren't gonna start till June sixth. We are still in May. So it's a, it's a week before we get this. That's the only problem that I have with this whole situation is I feel like the momentum is kind of going to kind of fade away. I wish these games were happening on Monday instead of on the 6th. That's my only big problem. It's going to be a while before we even talk about it again because it's a Friday and we will have a show on the following Monday. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we're going to do some uh, some previews oh, of and course, things. Of course. So we'll, we'll 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 be breaking this down to make sure everyone stays on top of it. Besides, I got to give you my prediction on who's going to win, and I really don't know because I think they're that e that evenly matched up that I'm looking forward to seeing you know trying to figure out who it is and then giving you guys my prediction. We'll look forward to that. Uh, we're going to take our first break of this episode when we come back. Moving on to um, college football and conference realignment and all of those things that keep getting more and more complicated. You are tuned in to The Andrew Tate Show by GSMC Sports, and we will be right back. <laughs> 